All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. That's all praises to the Most High God Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son Yahushai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who is a black man according to the Bible. This is the brother Hassan Karab, uh, you know, coming at you with another video. Uh, this time it's on reincarnation, and you know, let's get into it. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter one, verse nine. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Yeah, there's nothing new under the sun. Okay, everything on earth right now, it's it's already been. Okay? Uh, verse 10. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new? It hath already been of old time, which was before us. Right, This it's already been of old time. Like, for example, um, like Revelation 11 and 8, it says... Uh, uh, spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, I believe. So that's I'm talking about America. America is spiritually Sodom in Egypt. There's nothing new. Like everything America's doing, look at the dollar bill. They got the, uh, you know, the Egyptian um, pyramid on there. Because this is, this is Egypt. Okay? This is Egypt reincarnated. Verse 11. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Right, that's why when, you know, when we come back after we die, we go up to the, you know, up to the heavens, and then we get judged, and then we're reincarnated, uh, regenerated. We don't remember our former life. We don't remember anything. Okay. This is a book of Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse thirty-six. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt sit over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. Now, some people look this over, right, and they don't, you know, there's a couple ways to look at this, you know. Um, it's, this is thousands of years ago. This is Moses in the wilderness. So if he says he's going to bring them, the people in the wilderness, to, you know, they're going to serve other gods, and they're going to go to nations which their fathers haven't known. There's no record of people living thousands of years. So how did they get over here? They reincarnated. Okay, we're here. Those same people in the, in the wilderness... They're here today, okay? Um, this is a book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 4. It says, Thou shalt make, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Okay? Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, I want to focus on this. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Why would the Most High do that? Okay, does the Most High contradict himself? I'm going to read this real quick. This is the book of Deuteronomy 24, verse 16. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. So why if, you know, the iniquity of the fathers, why would the children have to suffer that? You know, as it's written in Isaiah 14, 21, prepare slaughter for, uh, for the iniquity of their fathers, right? Now, is the Most High a liar? Why would he say here that everyone's going to be put to death for their own sin? The child is not going to die for the father's sin. But here he says he's going to visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. It's because they're reincarnated through their loins, okay? That's why. So those same people that, uh, you know, transgressed in the, uh, in the wilderness, you know, that went off, we went off, going on into this madness, were the same people that got reincarnated and, you know, we are under the curses, okay? Uh, this is the book of Second Samuel, chapter seven, verse twelve. It says, "And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom." This time, about Solomon. Okay, he shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Solomon's kingdom wasn't built forever. Okay, I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. So, this is talking about Solomon, but Solomon was never chastened with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Who was? Yahweh Shai was. So, this is a prophecy about, and this tells you that Solomon is Yahweh Shai. 
Yahweh Shai of Solomon in his past life, okay? That's why in uh, in Matthew 101 it says, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, it says, Son of Abraham, son of David. Who's Solomon's son? David. Or, Slaka. Who's David's son? Solomon. Okay? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. That's talking about the chariots. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. So everyone's going to see him, and they also which pierced him. He got pierced 2,000 years ago. This is talking about 2,000 years ago. There's no record of anyone living 2,000 years. So how are they that pierced him going to see him? Because they're reincarnated, okay? Or regenerated. They're, they're, you know, those two words, they're synonymous with each other. This is the book of Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, okay, we're going to look at this word in a little bit, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall all, Salakia, ye also shall sit upon the twelve tribe, Salakia, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now, real quick, let's look at this, uh, this word, regeneration. Yeah, I know I probably uh, butchered it. Salakia. Uh, let's look at the etymology of this word, regeneration. Okay. Um, also, I want to get the Greek on it. Uh, no, I'll do it one second. My bad, Akim. I should have had this prepared. It's all good, though. Um, 19. Okay, let's look at this word, regeneration, in the Greek. See what it means. Okay, in the regeneration, Strong's 3824, and it's, I'll let it play. Strong's G, 3824, polygonesia, polygonesia. Polygonesia, okay, new birth. Reproduction, renewal, recreation. What does that word recreation mean? Re, back, creation. Back, created again. Created again, man. Okay. Uh, now, let's look at uh, the etymology. Um, from late Latin regenerationum, being born again. Okay. Make over. Generate again. Okay. So you're generated again. All right. Um, this is the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite thee, smite the earth with a curse. Okay? So who is that? Who is Elijah in his reincarnation? Well, two people. He's Alba Bivens and he's John the Baptist. Okay? Because he fits the prophecy, Abba Bivens does. Uh, if you don't know who Abba Bivens is, he's the um, the original founder of the uh, original IOCBK. Okay, this is a book in Matthew chapter eleven, verse twelve. It says, "And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force." Now, this is not talking about a war in heaven. Okay, there's no, you know, Michael the archangel. Archangel isn't, you know, he's not cutting up demons' heads off in the in the heavens or anything like that. This the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. That's talking about the nation of Israel. Okay, you know, as is written, was that Luke seventeen, I believe. I could be wrong. Where it says the the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, that's the Israelites. We suffereth violence. Okay, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elijah. Or Elias in the Greek, which was for to come. So John the Baptist was Elias. Now, according to the Christian Church, when you die, you go to heaven. So why is why is Elijah why is John the Baptist Elijah? Because he was reincarnated, okay, regenerated. All right. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter seventeen, verse four. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. 
Now, Jeremiah was a prophet of the Most High. He never discontinued from his heritage and his life as Jeremiah. He didn't, you know. So, how did he do that? When did he discontinue from his heritage? When he was reincarnated, okay, or regenerated. The words, again, are both synonymous with each other. Into, you know, like, for example, into uh, slavery, into America. Okay, we don't know who we are. So, Jeremiah, he didn't know who he was. He discontinued from his heritage, all right? This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto the Most High who gave it. So that's what happens when, you know, when you pass away. The dust returns to the earth as it was, and the Spirit returns to the Most High. Um, Alright. And then you're, re you're, you're regenerated through the loins of your fathers. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 29. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die. Okay? And so you die and return to their dust. So just how here, you know, you die and you return to the dust. Okay? Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. So they're renewed. I believe if you look up here, one of the words was, uh, or was it this one? Renewal. Boom. See that? Renewal. So, when you're uh, when you're renewed, you're regenerated. Okay? And now I want to get a few in the Apocrypha. Okay? This is a book of uh, 2 Ezra, chapter 5, verse 41. And I said, Behold, O, o Lord, uh, yet art thou nigh unto them that be reserved till the ends. And what shall they do that... Salakia... And what shall they do that have been before me, or we that be now, or they that shall come after us? And he said unto me, I will liken my judgment unto a ring. Okay? Like as there is no slackness of the last, even so there is no swiftness of the first. So the liken my judgment unto a ring. What's a ring? It's circular. Okay? So that's how his judgment is. You, you, you know, you pass away. You, uh, you know, you get... Judge, you come back and you keep going on and on and on like a circle. Okay, uh, this is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 35. For after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. We shall live again. Okay, we're gonna live again. Uh, book of Second Ezra, chapter 2, verse 16. Uh, and those that be dead will I raise up again from their places. So, they're not zombies, obviously. They're regenerated. And bring them out of the graves, for I have known my name in Israel. Okay? So, we're going to be brought out of the graves. We're going to be regenerated. Okay? Uh, this is the book of Second Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 22. I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it Okay, real quick, just to give you a backstory. So these are during the Maccabean period, there were Jakes being forced to eat pork, and they said, you know, they would rather die than eat pork. And this is their mother, okay? And she's she's talking right here. It says, I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you, you know, because you know she understands that the Most High does all this. She doesn't do all of it. You know, but you got Negroes talking about the black woman is God. Well, here's a so-called black woman telling you, basically, she ain't God. And she didn't do all this. The Most High God did this, okay? Um, but anyway, verse 23. But doubtless, the creator of the world, who is Yahweh, who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things, will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again. So he's going to give us breath and life again, as ye now regard not your own selves for his law's sake, because you know they're they're die, going to die for his uh, for his law, you know, because they ain't going to eat. We ain't going to eat pork, and that's what kind of mentality we need to have. We need to die for the Most High, okay? We need to die for His laws. Matter of fact, real quick, just to uh, matter. Of, oops, I'm tripping. I think it's in the same chapter actually. Uh, real quick. Um, here we go, boom, 
It came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken, and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh, and were tormented with scourges and whips. So they are getting beat, right? But one of them that spake first said thus, What wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. Okay, so real quick, you know, I just want to bring that out because that's the kind of spirit we need to be in. Ready to die for the laws of our fathers, okay? Um, you know, and with that, I hope this lesson was edifying and, you know, shalom.